Jay Imkins was the most influential macroeconomist who presented his theory, which is known as Keynes liquidity preference theory. This is the most important theory in macroeconomics. J. M. Keynes abandoned the classical view that velocity was a constant and developed a theory of money demand that emphasized the importance of interest rates. Fisher viewed that interest rates have no relationship with the money supply. But J. M. Keynes focused on this point that interest rate is the most important factor in determining the demand for money. His theory of the demand for money, which he called the liquidity preference theory, asked the question, why do individuals hold money? Keynes presented three motives. First one is known as the transactions motive. The second one is known as the precautionary motive. And the third one is known as the speculative motive. Now let me explain one by one. Number first, transactions motive. In the classical approach, individuals are assumed to hold money because it is a medium of exchange that can be used to carry out everyday transactions. So actually, uh, the Fisher theory suggested that people will use money only in one direction, and that is known as a medium of exchange, that money is a medium of exchange which people will use to carry out day-to-day -day transaction. Keen emphasis that this component of the demand for money is determined primarily by the level of people transaction. He believed that these transactions were proportional to income. It means that if you have more income, you will go for more transactions. So Keynes suggested the same conclusion that yes, transactions are proportional to income. If you have more income, you will go to the market to buy more things. He took the transaction component of the demand for money to be proportional to income. It means that the transactions demand for money is directly proportional to income. If you have more income, you will go for more purchases. If you have less income, you will go for less purchases. So the transaction motive is the main reason that people hold money. But Keith presented another important motive of holding the demand for money that why people are holding money why people are demanding money this is the second important motive suggested by jm keynes keynes also recognized that people hold money as a cushion against unexpected wants that is people hold money for emergencies such as car breakdown job loss so that's why P, uh, J. M. Keen suggested that people are demanding money for the precautionary motive to meet emergencies. Suppose that you have been thinking about buying a fancy stereo. You walk by a store that is having a 50% off sale on the one you want. If you are holding money as a precaution for just such an occurrence, you can purchase the stereo right away and vice versa. For example, if you are interested to buy a perfume or something else, and if you are passing by a market, and incidentally, you find that, oh, there is a 50% sale or 30% sale on shoes or perfume or something else. And at that moment, if you don't have money, you can't take the advantage from the sale. So precautionary money balances also come in handy if you are hit with an unexpected bill. For example, for car repair or hospital hospitalization, if someone is ill, or if you hit with an unexpected bill in different forms. So what do you will do if you don't have money? Teens argue that the precautionary money balances people want to hold would also be proportional to income. If you have income, then you will go to meet the emergency. If you don't have income, you can't take the advantage from the sale. Keen is saying that people are not holding money just for transaction purposes, but also for precautionary motive. And people are demanding money for both motives and their demand for money is directly proportional to their income level.
The third case is speculative motive. Keynes also believed that people choose to hold money as a store of wealth, which he called the speculative motive. Why people are storing the money? Keynes believed that wealth is tied closely to income. The speculative component of money demand would be related to income. However, Keynes looked more carefully at the factors that influenced the decision regarding how much money to hold as a store of wealth, especially interest rates. So Keynes was of the view that interest rate is also an important indicator determining the demand for money. For this purpose, Keynes divided the assets that can be used to store wealth into two categories, money and bonds. He then asked the following question. Why would individuals decide to hold wealth in the form of money rather than bonds? So actually, in the Fisher theory, we had money, the only determinant. Look at the argument. People would want to hold money if its expected return was higher than the expected return from holding bonds. Suppose if you are holding bond and if its return is less than from holding money. So you will say that I don't need to hold bond. I need to hold money because the expected return from money is higher than holding the bond and vice versa. Keynes assumed that the expected return on money was zero because in his time, most checkable deposits did not earn an interest rate. So at that time, when you have account in the bank, so your checkable deposits didn't earn any interest rates. That's why Keynes said that the expected return on money is zero. But for bonds, there are two components of the expected return. Number one, the interest payment and the expected rate of capital gains. Suppose when interest rates rise, the price of a bond fall. If you expect interest rate to rise, you expect the price of the bond to fall and therefore suffer a negative capital gain or capital loss. However, if you expect the rise in the interest rate to a substantial enough, the capital loss might outweigh the interest payments and your expected return on the bond would be negative. So in this case, you would want to store your wealth as money because its expected return is higher. It's zero return exceeds the negative return on bond. Keynes assumed that individuals believe that interest rates gravitate to some normal value. Suppose, if interest rates are below this normal value, individuals expect the interest rate on bonds to rise in the future and so expect to suffer capital losses on them. As a result, individuals will be more likely to hold their wealth as money rather than bonds and the demand for money will be high. People are generally uh, psychologically expecting a certain level of interest rate and if interest rates are below that certain normal value individual expect the interest rate on bonds to rise in the future they are thinking that interest rates will rise in the future so they expect to suffer capital losses what they will do individuals will be more likely to hold their wealth as money rather than bonds and the demand for money will be high. Now look at the reverse case. When interest rates are below the normal value, people will expect interest rate to fall, bonds price to rise, and capital gains to be realized. For example, if you are expecting that interest rates are above the normal value, then you are expecting that interest rate will fall to that normal value the bond price will rise. It means capital gain to be realized. At higher interest rates, they are more likely to expect the return from holding a bond to be positive because people are expecting that, that at this time, we will get more return from holding a bond, thus exceeding the expected return from holding money. So if it is positive, 
go for holding the bond but if its expected return is negative go for holding the money they will be more likely to hold bonds than money and the demand for money will be quite low so we can conclude that as interest rates arise the demand for money falls and therefore money demand is negatively related to the level of interest rate so in this theory j m keynes view that interest rates are the most important factor determining the demand for money but in the fisher quantity theory of money he suggested that interest rates have no relationship with the demand for money